out, did you? No word yet from the White House on the cause of the green sky. Many sources are indicating it may be connected in some way to the Hulk. Why don't you blame Mysterio while you're at it? Senior government officials speaking off the record have echoed the same sentiments, saying that if this is the Hulk's doing, they are prepared to take any necessary steps to put an end to the threat. Oh, you mean you want to declare World War Hulk 2? Good luck with that. But in order to know for sure, they need to locate the Hulk, which is an ongoing question in the Halls of Power today. Where exactly is the Hulk? Check outside. Recent shield activity near the Mount Wondergore site in Transia indicates military action may be necessary. It's green. And I thought the smog in LA was bad. Yeah, I don't think we should be breathing this air. It's gamma radiation. It's fine to breathe, as far as I know. Yes, but it gives the sky quite a beautiful tinge of color, doesn't it? Like the sky before a storm. Anyone want to tell me what I'm looking at? The storm is almost here. And so is the midnight sun. The prophecy is almost complete. Kathan is making his way into our dimension. Not if I have anything to do with it. Let's go inside. We have work to do. Hunter, we should, uh... I should speak with you about what you did to me. Is that an accusation? Of course not. I am grateful, of course. It has been so long since I've thought for myself. I was so focused on understanding what was happening with the Hulk. That obsession was how I stumbled onto... to her. And by then it was too late. I always thought myself capable of... Well, does it even matter? I made a choice, and the world paid for it. The Hulk is not to blame for once. All this destruction was the work of Bruce Banner. Bruce, Lilith's influence is supernatural. You cannot fault yourself for succumbing. No, I will not be absolved of this. I sought her out, not the other way around. Did you know what you were seeking? Well, no. But the result was the same. I can still sense her, you know. Even though you freed me from her influence, she still resides in my head. How? I remove the stain of Lilith's corruption. My irradiation keeps me attuned to her thoughts and feelings. Not all of them, but enough. At this moment, her excitement grows as the prophecy nears its end. Does the link go both ways? Does your presence threaten the Abbey? The Abbey is open to her, Hunter. She can breach it whenever she desires. It cannot be possible. When Wanda chased you and the others through Limbo, she pierced the Abbey's barrier. That was all Lilith needed to enter. If she has known that long, why not attack the Abbey directly? Haven't you figured it out? She doesn't want to win. That is impossible. It's the only explanation. There were so many times she could have killed you all. I encouraged her to do so more than once, but whatever her plans entail, they involve more than just killing the lot of you. Of a... of us. <clears throat> Dr. Banner. Please, call me Bruce. Bruce. In all the time I have known you, I realize how little I know about you. Would you mind telling me about yourself? Not at all. My life is an open, irradiated book. May I ask you about the Hulk? Of course. When did you first transform into the Hulk? Years ago, 
I worked on a device based on Howard Stark's original gamma accelerator. There was an accident, and I soaked up so much radiation I should have died on the spot. Instead, it unleashed a green-skinned manifestation of rage from within me. When I came to my senses, I realized what I'd become. I knew I couldn't be around people. To lose control like that? It still terrifies me. Yet, when I become angry or subjected to intense pain, Bruce Banner retreats for the duration. Are you and the Hulk different people? Or is he an aspect of your personality? I've heard contradictory conjecture from hundreds of experts. You see, I'm psychologically fascinating. Everyone has a pet theory. At this point, I think of the Hulk as a different person. Yet I also take full responsibility for his actions. It's... Well, it's why I betrayed him so deeply by working with Lilith. I'm supposed to be the responsible one. In a way, I'm his keeper. He doesn't really understand what happened, but... I decided on his behalf, like I always do. And very nearly killed his friends. Does the Hulk have any thoughts about Lilith? He finds her... <clears throat> There's some... Attraction. The Hulk has the hots for my mother? Yes, but he remembers she tried to hurt his friends. That makes him angry. And for the Hulk, anger always wins out. I had questions about the Avengers. Go ahead. What led the Hulk to join the Avengers? The way Tony tells it? They spent so much time stopping the Hulk from destroying cities, they offered him a job so they could keep tabs on him. But really, they need Bruce Banner. Yes, the Hulk is good to have around when Ultron attacks or scrolls invade, but my expertise gives the Avengers a crucial edge. And what is that? I plan ahead, develop contingencies and worst-case scenarios, solve impossible equations. I'm the only one who thinks it all through. Well, I was. What do you think of your fellow Avengers? Before all this, the Hulk and I respect Steve. Strange is fine, but he can aggravate the Hulk. Carol and I don't see eye to eye about where the Avengers should focus our efforts. Still, we're friends outside of work. Plus, she knows how to make Hulk laugh. And Thor? I always appreciate his grass charm. The Hulk likes him because he doesn't need to pull his punches when they're play fighting. What about Tony? Ah, Tony. He knows full well the Hulk can reduce him to a fine souls of mist. Yet he constantly pokes and prods. You'd think he was trying to provoke me. But we both respect him for that. He treats us like any other person. He knows what we are, and he's not afraid. Will the Avengers forgive you for what you did? Hmm... Usually I wake up to discover what terrible damage the Hulk has caused. The team always understood and supported me in their way. This... It's a very different situation. You ask if they will forgive me? I don't know if they should. But... Is it possible? It's possible. But if so, it won't be soon. Nor should it be. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Hunter. I... It took me far too long to find my place. I'm glad it was, um... I'm glad it was here. Hunter, we need to talk in the Forge immediately. The shield's saying the green skies are just a normal atmospheric event? This is not an Avengers level threat. I don't remember being consulted on that decision. Do you, Steve? After this, I am so done with clandestine quasi-government organizations. Cover up or not, we have to present a united front and follow Fury's play. Yeah, hard pass. We gotta tell the world the truth, or we lose the trust of anyone with a camera or access to social media, which, last I checked, is the population of Earth. Woof, I've been there. 
Nobody cares about the truth. Nobody believes a primordial god is about to wake up and devour the universe. We believe it. Because you've seen it, Rogers. But I remember calling the Avengers hotline with the same story and getting nowhere. Everyone laughed at me. Well, not everyone. I still haven't heard back from Cloak and Dagger. This is no time to quibble over PR statements and cover-ups. Nico's right. We can contradict S.H.I.E.L.D. and tell the truth, but most people aren't going to buy it. Save the damage control spin for after we banish Cathan. If we banish Cathan. And it was glowing this way when you walked in here? Yes, it's like something flipped it on. As if it's preparing for the Midnight Sun. I think that's precisely what it's doing. It knows its owner is coming back to pick it up, and it wants to look good. Yes, that's an excellent way to put it. I know a thing or two about magic artifacts, especially if they're swords. So I have observed. Perhaps when we take a breather, you can explain to me exactly how your portal spell works. It appears to be quite effective. You want to talk shop? You got it. But watch yourself. I might end up becoming the Sorcerer Supreme one of these days. I don't feel threatened. In fact, nothing would make me happier. Our time has almost run out, Hunter. If we're ever going to find out what this God Killer can do, Tony and I need to start researching it now. I know you and Tony will be able to find something helpful. Because the alternative... ...is too grim to consider. All right. Then let us find out what this God Killer is all about. Excellent. You know what to do at the Anvil. Please get us started, Hunter. What are you doing out here, Wanda? Was feeling nostalgic and wanted to visit some old haunts. This is where it all started, you know? Where Agatha decided to take me under her wing and teach me all the magic tricks I wasn't supposed to know. Agatha was daring, often taking risks on people. You mean, taking risks on people she shouldn't? That is not what I meant. I know. Sorry, it's just... I still feel responsible for her not being here. She always believed in you, you know. Talked about you all the time. There was a lot of pressure to live up to your legend. Wanda, what was Agatha teaching you exactly? I'm not so sure you want to know, or I want to tell you. Tell me anyway. Okay, but you can't freak out. I cannot make that promise until after you tell me. Then, I will respond to the information with the appropriate reaction. Fair enough. Okay, here it goes. Agatha thought I could prevent the Midnight Sun. Prevent the prophecy. She said that? I think... I think she was training me to be, um... To be... You. Wait, wait. Do you mean to say she was training you to be the Hunter? To be me? Basically, yes. You know, I think you would make a fine Hunter. Oh, come on. No one here can do what you do. Except for you, maybe. Well, luckily for us all, we don't have to find out. My girl Nico resurrected you, so it's not all left to me to screw up. And believe me, Hunter, I would have screwed it up. I haven't even been able to trust myself enough to go back to the library and continue my studies, even knowing Agatha forgives me.
Wanda, you cannot continue being so afraid of your own shadow. You need to start learning to accept yourself. I know, I know. It's just... Oh, a lot of guilt and shame to work through. Wanda, you should never be ashamed of or feel guilty about your gifts. Let me help you work through your fears and become more comfortable standing in your power. You would do that for me? When I am done with you, Wanda, your knowledge of the Arcane will surpass even Dr. Spooky himself. All right, deal. Just don't say I didn't warn you. It's wonderful to see Bruce back in the Abbey. I hope the others are not wary of him. I do not blame them if they are. We had to fight the Hulk many times. We all know he was under Lilith's command. We gave Wanda the opportunity to regain our trust, and we should extend that same courtesy to Bruce. What anyone did under Lilith's control is not reflective of who they are as a person. I'm happy to have him here. It's also good for morale. Seeing Iron Man and Doctor Strange with more enthusiasm is a nice change of pace. Do not fault the others if it takes them some time to feel comfortable. Change isn't meant to be seamless or fast. Although I'm curious now. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's nothing serious. But I am wondering if you think everyone who has ever done something bad is capable of changing. I think it depends on who needs redeeming. Would you give, say, your mother a second chance? I do not think I can answer that. That's fair. Giving people the opportunity to change can be a liability, and it could backfire. But I think it's always worth the risk. If you'll excuse me, I need to introduce myself to Bruce and apologize for any bruises I left. I wouldn't have guessed we'd become such fast friends, Hunter, but I welcome your company. I am. You look close to Lilith. You can help guide me towards the right decision. Help as many people as you can. So, the Midnight Sun has arrived. Despite our best efforts, threatening to end the lives of millions. And Kathan is threatening to consume the whole planet, ending even more. Yes, I know. But as Wanda so compassionately pointed out, there are people in desperate need of help out there. Our help. It's my strong opinion we should save as many souls as possible before confronting Lilith. I agree. Life is too precious. We must save everyone we can. I thought you'd agree. Hydra's everywhere. Where should I go first? That's up to you. But I do want you to bring Banner. He needs to get back out there, get some wins, before our final showdown with Lilith. Ever since I learned of the Hulk's existence, I've dreamed of fighting side by side with such a warrior. Well, now is your chance. I will leave the final decision to you, but you know my opinion. Oh, and Hunter, happy hunting. Don't just stand there. There are lives out there that need saving. The slumbering giant beneath the darkest of holes. Does slumbering giant refer to Banner, Kathan, Wanda, or D, all of the above? Option E, for other. What? After your third or so apocalypse, you never know what's going to come out of left field at the last second. Either way, hell's coming. Hells are always coming, Blade. There's no just one hell anymore. I gotta go check in on Ant-Man and MJ. And maybe the rest of the neighborhood. I don't know, Queens? No, Spider-Man. The more hell we keep focused on us, the less hell there is everywhere else. We're holding Lilith's attention to keep others out of harm's way. We can't split up now. 
Okay, everyone just said different things to me and I'm not sure which one to respond to. How about we change topics to this? I think it's safe to say that maybe we got this is a safe thing to say. That was a long walk with a lot of caveats. Bravo for that, Nugget Ghost Rider. Pete, how many times I gotta tell you? Do not sit on the hell ride! Hunter, is there any way to buckle up for a head-on collision with a demonic horde? I'm not even sure demonic horde is the appropriate term. I gotta ask Nico for a refresher on occult terminology. How do you feel about taking down an Elder God? I've trained Sparky to go for a demon's sensitive areas. Can't speak for other ghost riders, but this one loves keeping the end times at bay. This hunter is my time to ride against the forces of hell. And are you prepared for the less desirable scenario where we do not make it? Nope, I'm in complete denial. It's gonna go like this, save the world, go home, give my brother a big hug, throw a barbecue for the neighborhood. I have no idea how Gabe survived without you for so long. <laughs> he says he doesn't even notice I'm gone. I think it is adorable he is keeping a tough exterior, for your sake. I should make life easier for him. So he doesn't have to. You already are, by fighting our trans-dimensional threat. That's a damn good point, Hunter. Nice reframe. And how are you passing the time until our big moment? I tuned the Hell Ride for the fourth time. I read the last page of all my comics just in case. And, uh, you know, trying to be chill before my head catches fire. Maybe I should do a fifth tune-up. You look cool. Calm and collected, considering the circumstances. Keeping a cool head is kind of my thing, but you know that. I'm telling you, Hunter, I don't know what's coming next, but I do know when the shit hits the fan with Cathan, there's no other place I'd rather be than parked right here with my friends. I could not think of a more honorable band of heroes to spend the end of my days with myself. Same. We gotta make the most of the good times while we can. Because when the shit gets unreal, we might not have any time left. The best way for me to help Aunt May, MJ, everyone back home is to be here. But being here, I just wish I was back with them. They worry about me. But the only way to ensure nobody gets hurt is to throw myself at the big, scary, Lilith-shaped problem. We are Defenders. No way! You were in the Defenders, too? Doctor Strange recruited me once, but he told me it was a secret. We were secret Defenders. Oh, wait, does that mean I shouldn't have told you? No, oh, pretend I didn't say anything. It is not easy, Peter. With or without a mask, people worry about us. And we worry about them. Sounds about right. I just wish I could warn them, you know? Something. Both you and Blade seem rather unfazed about the imminent invasion of this dimension by a homicidal Elder God. Oh, this is not the worst Armageddon scenario I've lived through. Just how many have you been through, Carol? You mean the end of this world, or are we talking other planets too? All of the above. Let's put it this way. I lived through a time literally called the Age of Apocalypse. That sounds rather stressful. It was, but there comes a point in every cataclysmic event when you just have to let go and, I don't know, roll with it. All you have to do is be ready to fight for what you care about when the time comes. I will stand ready to fight for life, then. And when I say life, I mean Charlie. That dog is totally adorbs. Well, half-dog. 
what is he? A demon dog? I believe the breed is technically called a hellhound. Right. Well, I'm fighting for my fur baby, too. Call me a crazy cat lady, but I am not going to let some hangry elder god eat Chewy. Or your dog. Not on my watch. You must all draw a line in the sand somewhere. Pet eating is definitely mine. <sighs> I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't worry about what you can't control. You'll face Lilith soon enough. What should I do between now and then? How you spend your possibly last moments on this version of Earth is your choice. I, for one, have always been curious about what's really under the hood of Robbie's ride, and tonight, I'm determined to find out. Show them what happens when you mess with the Midnight Suns. Hulk follows orders. You left me no choice. Love the effort. Let's do it. I'm saving my energy so we can do it. That's an interesting technique. Feel bad. You're not ready for me yet. Yeah, 
And you're ugly, too. Sure, why not? Where have I seen that before? I doubt they'll take that beating to heart, but we can always hope. Anyone down for a last movie before the end of the world? Um, yes. Let me log into Piotr's WatchMax Plus account. We did this at Xavier's once. Had Ride of the Valkyrie stuck in my head for a week. It was fine till the Sentinels attacked. Then, it was cool. Why do all the talking kitten cartoons have five hearts? Oh, Piotr, you big softy. Okay, the movie we're watching tonight is none other than... Summer Camp Tango! Me and Maria rehearsed every move in this film. Yeah, my cousins forced me to watch it every summer, so I'm very much into this idea. Bunazua. Hunter, wanna watch a bad 80s movie with us before we face a hungering elder god? Entertainment on the eve of battle? Yes. Yay! For fun! Ileana keeps the limbo fully stocked, so refreshments are a portal away. Just ask. Quiet, quiet! Here we go. Clint and Natasha always reference the slobs against the snobs. Never understood what it meant. Until recently, it could have been the Midnight Suns against the Avengers. That makes Tony the snob. And Nico is definitely the slob. Eh, I'll own it. Do not apply logic to a crappy 80s movie. Hey, I didn't say anything about the shape-shifting aliens plan to judge the dance contest. I just want to know how the slobs plan to push that much chili through the sprinkler system. With enough pressure, you can push chili through anything. Don't ask me how I know that. Ugh, of course the head counselor is a Russian spy. Yup, it's an 80s movie. How much did Soviet Russia care about teen hijinks? More than you think. Now that's a dance contest. Okay, I see the appeal. Ah, uh, it's magical. Magic is the one thing this movie didn't have. But you liked it anyway because it is heartwarming pablum. Maybe.